Well, we are talking about what? No. Tests of faith, okay? And <clears throat> this whole chapter in chapter 5 and chapter 6, I look at it from the perspective of God testing our faith. The feeding of the 5,000 was an individual test to Philip. But Philip was a representative disciple. And so it was also a test for people like Judas Iscariot and the other apostles. It seems like only Andrew got the message, okay? <clears throat> and then we went in the crossing of uh, the Sea of Galilee. The order was given and they were not prepared <clears throat> for uh, the unconventional way by which Jesus joined them. But another area that uh, we also need to look at is this. The moment you receive a command from the Lord, the enemy begins to oppose you. No matter why it is, the enemy will oppose you. No matter how little it looks or how big the command is, the devil with his angels will now begin to try to stop you from doing or performing the works of God. So, the question I would like to zero in in this aspect of the tests of faith is this. <clears throat> what are miracles for? Why in the world do you pray for miracles? And why is it that God makes the miracle? Almost all the miracles in the Bible after creation, creation is all God. After that, it's a divine partnership. There is always a human effort and there is a divine activity. And from what we learned last Friday, Moses stretched your hand. And after he stretched forth his hands, then God did his work. It doesn't matter if your, if your uh, participation is only 1%. Because God gave man dominion over the earth. The ownership was given to man. The earth belongs to the Lord, but, but you will have dominion over every living thing. That means the plants, the animals, the birds, everything that creeps, everything that has life in it. We have dominion. But of course, Satan try to cut us under our legs. And uh, what ended up happening is Adam committed high treason. But still then, if God wants to do something in your life, you will have a part. I don't care if it's 1% or 2%. And God is not even interested in the percentage. I'm just looking at human analysis here. So it's not of the spirit. I'm just telling you that's what you see in the scriptures. Pick up your mat and walk. He has to pick it up. After he pick it up, he walked, okay? And so there is always human participation. You cannot be expecting a miracle just sitting down. There is always something that God wants you to do. That is because dominion was given to us on the face of the earth. That's why Jesus will reign over the face of the earth because he is the second Adam, okay? So now, go back to the question. What are miracles for? When you receive a miracle from the Lord, do you really learn from it? Or do you see the real miracle that God is actually doing? <clears throat> so let's read. This will be a continuation about the feeding of the 5,000. It seems like <clears throat> the crossing of the Sea of Galilee was an interchange, okay? It was a momentary um, Change of topic is a segue, and then it picked up on uh, verse 22. The next day, <coughs> what is the next day? The day after the feeding of the 5,000. Because, uh, so that's just around 24 hours, less than 24 hours. Because that night they crossed over the Sea of Galilee on, on, onto uh, Capernaum, Capernaum. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea... <coughs> saw there had been only one boat. 
So it seems like even the crowd was expecting two boats because Jesus will join them. Remember the story this morning? They also saw that Jesus had not boarded the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples <coughs> had gone off alone. Some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, <clears throat> they got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. <clears throat> when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, now remember they were seeking Jesus. It seems, wow, this, these people are really into Jesus now. You know. Master, where, where have you been? How did, how did you get here? And Jesus answered, and listen, I, I like Jesus. He's not like us, you know. Uh, he's not a psychologist either. He, uh, he just gave it straight. Now, th th this is what you and I need to learn, especially parents. You need to learn how to do this to your children, especially leaders. You need to talk not only to the person from, from the words that are coming out of their lips. We normally respond to what comes out of their lips. You need to learn how to talk. We need to learn how to talk to each other from what is coming from our hearts. A carnal person, we respond according to what we hear from somebody's lips. Okay? That's carnality. You need to learn how to talk to the human heart even if something else is coming from the mouth. That's how Jesus talked to people. Are you following me? Okay? Let me repeat that. If, you're, if your wife... Or, or if your children <clears throat> say you have a, uh, what? I don't know, whatever age it is. What is a safe age that people will not easily be offended? I don't know. Let's keep 29. If you are 29, pretend you are not, okay? So here, here's a 29-year-old woman married very happy. And then he's with his family. And then suddenly one, one day, she's very quiet. And the dad looks at her and says, daughter, anything wrong? Oh, no, dad. There's nothing wrong. And the dad will answer because she, he knows the woman. But daughter, you have been silent all day. It's nothing but sadness from your heart. And she stopped and says, oh, dad, you know me too well. She is saying something else. And this is our carnality. We focus so much on what we hear. Okay? Did you guys ever notice I keep addressing your fears? Some of you pretend to be smart, but that is not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a tremendous amount of fear. That's what I am addressing. Okay, don't lie to me now. I see it. Okay? And so that's what you have to learn how to talk to the heart. If you only talk to what you hear, you will miss proper communication. Adam, where art thou? Well, you know, I'm afraid because I'm naked. Who told you you're naked? Why, can God not see it? Did God doesn't know that the glory clothing was gone? He does. Who told you? What God is saying is this. Adam, who have you been talking to? You see that? That's the point. That's why if, if my kids started having wayward words, I start asking, who are your new friends? What shows are you watching? Because it's not becoming of them to be uttering those unwholesome words. But we are so carnal, we are just listening with our ears. 
from what is coming from the lips. You have to learn how to talk to the heart. Are you following me? Okay. Let's continue then. So, Rabbi, where did you, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. <laughs> no, don't, don't read that like, Truly you are looking for me? No, he was upset. <laughs> because they missed the whole miracle. They never saw the miracle. They ate the bread and never saw the miracle. You can actually partake of the blessings or the symptoms of the miracles and miss the miracle altogether. And that is what I would like us to see tonight. <clears throat> Don't work, and then look at this thing. Don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life. It's a beautiful passage right here. As simple as it gets, and yet so profound. Which the Son of Man will give you, because... God the Father has set his seal of approval on him. They were just looking for him to eat bread and look at the teaching that was generated from that activity. And look at the answer. They were looking for Jesus. Now, now look at this. Jesus momentarily opened their hearts, right? I want you to, to see the scriptures here. Where have you been? When did you arrive? You're not looking for me because you, you saw the, the signs. But because you ate the bread and you were filled, and then he proceeded to teach. At that moment, their eyes were temporarily opened, and they answered, Look at this answer. It's a totally different conversation. Verse 28 What can we do to perform the works of God from looking for bread? Well, Jesus, it was supper yesterday, it's been over 12 hours. Let's go for breakfast. That's why they were looking for Jesus. And now Jesus said what he said, and then these people responded, what do we do to perform the works of God? You see this, this kind of communication that was taking place? The guys were looking for Jesus because they ate the bread. Now Jesus saw their heart. He was not responding to their activity of looking for him. He responded to their hearts. You, you guys are just thinking about eating. They saw the heart of God. They saw the heart of Jesus. And so they say, what do we do to perform the works of God? It changed. I wish you guys are following this. You know, because I'm, I'm, in this teaching, I'm not only teaching you the word, I'm teaching you how to have your devotion. Okay? So just stop reading the daily bread and think you're having devotion. Read your Bible. That's how you do your devotion. Okay? This is a test on the effect of miracles in your life. How should one receive a miracle from God? Perhaps each of us have experienced a miracle <coughs> in our lives and we certainly are aware that it is from God. After receiving the miracle that you call is a miracle, what was its effect on your life. Let's illustrate this through a set of questions. For example, <clears throat> say God heals you from a certain sickness, say colds or headache, okay? So, you're having migraine or you're having a tremendous sickness. John, some time ago, got, got healed of asthma. His doctor said, no more asthma. If God heals you of asthma, how did you understand that miracle? I was healed of asthma. <laughs> That's what a cardinal person said. I was healed of asthma. Well, obviously you were healed of asthma. But how did you understand the miracle? How did you receive your healing from asthma? That is a more important question. Okay? Because if you cannot answer that question properly, asthma will return. And other sickness will return. And the same reaction that you had before you were healed will be worse. Before you had your miracle, you were afraid. Now, if you never learn your lesson, you will not just be afraid, you will be terrified. 
from, from, from a worldly statement, you'll be, you'll be a, a, how do you call that? Oh, I forgot. Okay. If God, I was, I was going to say something, it was on the tip of my tongue. It left, okay? If God gave you a financial miracle, how did you understand that financial miracle? Okay, I need, I need uh, $10,000. I need a thousand dollars, and God gave me a thousand dollars. How did you understand that miracle? I've got ten thousand dollars. You blind fool! <laughs> you have no idea what you got. Okay? You got a miracle. Do you understand the miracle? If God helped you with a relationship problem, how did you understand that miracle? How come people they have a relationship problem and they keep going back into the same relationship problem? You know. I've, I've had counseling, oh, Pastor, you know, I've got this boyfriend or girlfriend and terrible and this and that and this and that. Okay, you give the, uh, godly counseling. Okay, break up and this and that. Okay, 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 okay. We're going we're to do that. And then the next week you find out they are back together again. And worse, the relationship was mended and they got back into it. They never saw the miracle. The miracle was done. They never saw it. They missed the whole thing. They thought they saw it. No, you did not. You saw the sign of a miracle or a sign of a miracle, but you never really saw a miracle. Because the moment you see the miracle, it will have a different effect in your life. I'll explain that as we go on. If God saved you and write your name in the Lamb's book of life, how did you understand this phenomenal miracle of new birth? Let me ask you this Are you guys born again? How, how do you understand that miracle? What does it mean to be born again? What is God's activity in your life now that you are born again? You see, we keep missing this thing. We just simply say, oh, my name is in... You mean Jesus died so that he can take his uh, big ball pen and write your name? Okay, DJ is here now. Is that, is that it? Does he really need a book? Why, does it, can he not remember my name? You see, we, we keep missing this. Why did you get, what, what is the, how did you see that miracle that you get born again? Now that's, I can start off with that because I'll answer the other ones later. You know what happened when you get born again? That means that now, now God is once again actively involved in your life. He's no longer outside door. He's in, inside your house again. Now, if God is actively involved in my life now, I can be led by him now. I am no longer in darkness. So I can no longer go around saying, oh, I'm confused, you know, before I get born again, I know whom to talk to. Now I don't know whom to talk to. You missed the miracle. You get the peace and get born again, but you missed it. You never realize that you have more guidance now, better guidance, the best guidance and you don't have to be defeated anymore. But most Christians don't get it. Because all we are interested in, I raise my hands, I go to the altar, I wrote a, a decision card, and that's it. You miss the whole miracle. That's why people keep uh, going back to the altar. Can you imagine I, I knock on DJ's door? DJ, can I come in? Yes, Papa, come in. So I went in. After I came in, she had a few pro a fr problem in the house. The light bulb needs to be changed. She went to the door and opened the door and says, Papa, come in. And I was already in. DJ, who are you talking to? Papa, I want you to come in. I'm already in. What do you need? No, come in first, Papa. Well, I'm already in. Because you never understood that God walked in already. And so we keep asking him in. How in the world is he going to get in if he's already in? Because we never saw the miracle. We have religion. That's why some people never get the assurance of their salvation. You get it? You know. One day my wife was being jealous of me and for several reasons. I said, Ann, I married you. I said, I'm not going to live through this. I don't want to live under suspicion. I said, I'm a man of God. I, I serve the Lord. I love you. I'm not going to cheat on you. Whether you take it 
or you'll be miserable for the rest of your life. And that's it. You have to accept I'm already in your life. Don't ask me to keep coming in. I'm already in your life. Do you understand that? I ask those questions because I reckon that some, if not most of, or most or all of us, receive a miracle from God and yet fail to understand that miracle. Is it too hot in here now? Okay. We fail to receive the message from God from that miracle. Therefore, instead... <clears throat> Every miracle should help us grow in faith. Instead of growing in faith, it has a wrong effect. Not the miracle, but our reception has a wrong effect in our lives. It never draws us closer to God at all. Have you heard this when you're courting somebody? Well, if you grew up in the Philippines, because I think here, girls also court the boys, you know. Uh, I don't know who does more courtship here, but in the Philippines, at least during my time, we go after the girl, you know. So I went after Anne. I, the thing that I want to hear from her is for her to say, I love you too. I know she, not, she doesn't want like, maybe, maybe I have such an ugly name, she doesn't like mentioning my name. She calls me pastor. <laughs> Pastor, I love you. That's, that's less romantic. Pastor. <laughs> <clears throat> now, well, actually I'm a little bit faster than most, okay? So before she gave me her yes, we would cross the street and I would I would put my arms. <laughs> I would, I would put my arm around. But the moment she said yes, I have noticed, unless she feels uncomfortable, I don't need permission. She's already mine. I grab her hand. I put my uh, arms around her. She doesn't complain. Yeah. In fact, she likes it. But I remember the first time I put my arms around her, she was a little bit. <laughs> but, but that's it. I mean, there's no way you're going to get around me. You know? So that's it. But after she gave her yes, boy, she is comfortable. And I know she likes it. Why? Because at that point, using Filipino courtship language, she is now mine. I understood what happened. Okay, so one time I was sitting on the bench in her store, and there's this guy asking her for a date. Now, I don't know how you guys would react to that, but that was, that was funny, you know? I was reading newspaper, and this guy, when are we going to go out? Oh, I, I cannot go out with you. Why? My boyfriend will know. He will never know. We will never tell. Impossible. He, he will know. Why? He's there. <laughs> you know, I remember how oh, I, I felt good. I, I felt good. You know, some, some people will be upset. I, I felt like a peacock, you know. I, 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 I feel like a, a rooster that just won a fight, you know. I stood up and said, I am Jose. And he's much richer than me. And I smile, ha ha, you lost. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. You see what I'm saying? I understood. I did not go to Anna and say, nakipag-date ka pa dyan? Tsura mo lang? No, none of that. You're mine. Yeah. She, she wrote me a letter one day and said, uh, is it okay? If, because I was in the, I, I'm here, and she was back in the field. Can I, can I go out on a date? I said, sure, I'll just kill you. And I said, by the way, I don't need to be there. I'll kill you. <laughs> but I, I didn't go after her like, hey, are you, are you this? Are you? 
No. No. There was a transaction that took place, an ownership. I'm hers. She's mine. I can explain that to you from the natural perspective with the spiritual implication. Okay. Because some of you do not know what belongs to you. When my wife gave birth to my kids, she did not only give birth to my kids, they gave birth, she gave birth to my war arrows. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They are all my arrows. They are mine. I understood that. You, you think these this kids will, will, will be growing old and they look at me and say, Papa, I will not answer to you anymore. You're just an arrow to me. They are in my quiver. Are you following me? How do I know that? I understood the miracle. Can you imagine these parents? Hey, arrow, can, can I shoot you? Can I, can I use you? Can I? They ask for permission. Son, daughter, can, can, can you help me? Well, what do you mean by that? They are arrows in your quiver. You use them. God gave them to you. That's why I'm stronger now that my kids are grown up. Of course, physically, they think I'm weaker, but I'm stronger now. You know, because I understood the miracle. You know. If no church wants me when they grow up, fine. I'll just... Force them to give their tithes to me. I'm set. You see? Uh, of, of course, that will not be biblical, but I'm thinking that way. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to tell John, after you give your tithes, all the offerings belong to me. The same, you know? More than double the offering, <laughs> like that. But I'm thinking funny things like that sometimes. But I understood. You know, John is, is very helpful to me now in the ministry. Yeah. He's, a quip, he, he's an arrow. He is in my quiver. You see. So now I understood the miracle of, of raising a family. That's why all of my arrows are being sharpened and disciplined. And they have to be straight arrows. Otherwise, otherwise they will be useless. Now if you understand that, you will discipline your kids. But if you don't understand that, that's when you get lost. You see. You never understood the miracle. Yeah. Now, those miracles should draw us closer to Jesus. If after a miracle is done in your life, you did not draw closer to Jesus, you missed it. All you got was the symptom or the effect of the miracle, but never saw the miracle. Now, 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 let me tell you this. Did Israel saw the miracle of the ten plagues? They experienced the effect. They never saw it. If they saw it, this will be a fearless bunch of people. No giants will stand their ways. But they're scared. They only experience the effects of the miracle. Never saw the finger of God. If you saw the finger of God, you're not going to be afraid of anything. Are you following me still? Okay. Now, in John <clears throat> chapter 6, that's why look at this. After they experienced the 10 plagues, my goodness, they turned their back on God. Now you will begin to understand why some Christians, after experiencing miracles from the Lord, they backslid. They never really saw the real thing. If you can accept it, <coughs> when you see a miracle, you are looking at God. Yeah. So you, your relationship with Him should be closer. Now in John chapter 6, 1 to 15, this is the fourth sign, <coughs> the feeding of the 5,000. As the story resumes in our text, <coughs> The recipients of that miracle are the, are the subjects of this test of faith. It was not just the apostles or Philip or the twelve in the crossing of the Sea of Galilee. 
Now it's the audience, it's the congregation, it's the church. They were looking for Jesus. <clears throat> it sounds good. But why were they looking for him? Same question that we can ask today. Why do we look for Jesus? This is where we see some problems on how they received the miracle from God. So this time, the general crowd or the church growers who attends the miracle revival meetings are now under test. If I ask you this, perhaps some of you can, can have some decent answers. How many revival meetings have you be, guys been to? Or how many healing meetings have you been to? How many services have you guys been in? Huh? Look, if the moment you answer that question, and then after being in the services so many times, you ask the question, do, do, do I have to go to church? I'm scared. You just missed God. You never saw him. Where have you been? Where have you been? You see? Now, here's the question. Rabbi, when did you get here? Were they there to hear the word or be fed again with barley <laughs> or and tilapia? So in this short conversation, we get to pick at the human heart why they go to church. Oh, br brother, I have not seen you in a long time. Yeah, I'm living by faith now. I lost my job. You did not come to church to seek the face of God. You lost your job. You think you're going to find an employer in the church or maybe you will have a pouty face and have somebody give you a recommendation. So you come to church and you miss God entirely. You are looking for a contact. God is not your provider. He never was. He has been there standing in front of you. You missed him. You're looking for contact, you know. Pray for me. They look for Ate, I believe. Pray for me. You missed God the first time. You never realized you can pray to Him. So now you are looking for a crutch who will pray for you. You miss God entirely. It should have been an indication of I will never leave you nor forsake you, but you missed the whole point. What's the answer of Jesus? They did not look for Jesus because of the sign they saw. Jesus did a sign. In fact, it seems like from the statement of Jesus, <coughs> that they did not see the sign at all. All they saw was the bread. Now, the disciples were picking up the bread. and getting, Do they know that it's multiplying? All, they didn't say, oh, Jesus, we saw all the bread multiplied. They, we ate the bread. Did they see the multiplication of the bread? I'm not sure they saw it. They just saw a bunch of bread. You see, that's all we see. Oh, somebody get healed. You never saw God at all. That's why have you noticed sometimes in a miracle service, some people are going out and having text messages. I've seen this in churches. Hey, God is doing something inside. And you're posting something on Facebook. God is doing something inside. He's saving people. He's saving people. And you're out there posting your ugly picture in Facebook. You missed the whole thing. Are you following me? And this is why our faith do not grow. I was telling you about the worship team in our old church in the Philippines, up there they lead worship. They'll go and eat bola bola, fishbowl. Why do you think God went with you to eat fishbowl? When the minister is preaching? Oh, you're not interested in listening to him. You're just interested in listening to yourself sing. You miss the whole point. You meet with God in the house of the Lord. He is it. It's not the pastor. It's not the worship team. It's not your prospective spouse. Okay? It's not the person. You, you don't go to church as a debt collector. 
Because somebody owes you money, you come to meet with God. But we miss the whole point all the time. Because of the carnal way we are thinking. They came because they ate the loaves and were filled. This seems like they were eating, but were not getting filled. Now remember, the bread of life satisfies. He who eats this bread will hunger no more. Oh, wait till we start that next week. I am the bread of life. Because Christians to this day just partially understand what that means. Then came the real reason why the miracle... Oh no, why did Jesus feed the 5,000? Children. <coughs> why is it that your parents keep feeding you? That's what you think. So that you can get out of their way. So that you will grow, find your job, and feed yourself. And be an important contributor to the family and the community. That's ultimately it. I, I'm not feeding you and clothing you so that I can keep. One day I'll die if you stay with but while I'm alive, I would like to see all of my kids be able to buy for themselves, fend for themselves, feed themselves, earn for themselves. Oh, that will make me very happy. That's why I'm doing my best to make sure that they're educated and they walk the straight path because the devil will set obstacles along their path. And by all means, under God's help, I will achieve my goal. Why? Because the Bible already told me children are gifts from the Lord. You know what gifts are? Gifts are something that make you happy. Huh? Are you listening? That's a simple, gifts are something that make you happy, unless they give you a poison, you know. God will never give you a poison. That's what the Bible says, right? The gifts of God makes you happy. My kids makes me happy. If your kids don't make you happy, you never receive the gift. What, what do you mean, Pastor, say? Chew on it. Perhaps you'll see it as we progress on the study, okay? I received, I'm happy, I am saved. I received eternal life. I don't go around testifying, oh, I'm a Christian now. I'm going to heaven. I don't do that. I received the gift. You know, I'm happy I have the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues every day. Well, see, some people are still wondering, can I speak in tongues? Knock it off. I speak in tongues every day. Why? Because he is a gift to me. He helps me in my prayers. He's my comforter. He's my helper. And if he is a gift to me that will not make me like an orphan, he assumes the role of Jesus in my life. I can talk to him. I can fellowship with him in the name of Jesus. Amen? That is if you understand it. Now, here's the reason why he made the miracle. In verse 27, don't work for the food. Why did he say don't work for the food? They work hard to find him. We have seen the Sea of Galilee. They were on their side. They, they, they walk all around. They worked hard. I don't know how many hours they walk. Don't work for the food. Don't look for me to eat barley and tilapia. But work for the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal of approval on him. He said, why are you looking to me for bread? You remember the passage, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be, shall be added unto you. The bread, the clothing, the shelter. DJ, you should not be looking for shoes. You should not be you should not waste your time 
worrying about clouds. If you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, these things will... Look, I am an example here. I don't, I don't seek these things for decades, especially after I got married. My wife seek those things. I don't seek those things. But God keeps, keeps giving me uh, good things. I don't, I don't even know they are good, but my wife told me, you know, you know what you're wearing? I, I told my wife, suit or a shirt. At one time, you know what you're wearing? That's what Joseph wants. Oh, what, what is this? Seven diamonds. Where are the diamonds? I'll sell it. You know? <laughs> Will it turn out seven diamonds? Is, you, you, you look, it's, it's a brand. You know? It's supposed to be a good brand. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph likes it. She said, you, you, you're wearing seven diamonds. Who cares if it's seven or one or two diamonds? All I need is a shirt. But it turned out, what God has been giving me are the best things in life. You know, at one time I was carrying my my uh, my uh, how do you call this thing? Backpack. It turned out it's a very good brand. One time somebody saw the vest that I'm wearing. It's a how, how do you call it? Mon Montclair. The vest. I I never realized it was very expensive, and I, I didn't pay for it. You know, very expensive. So my wife, somebody was looking at it, and my wife says, oh, that's a Montclair. The guy Googled, it's a few thousand dollars. I told my wife, let's sell it. Yeah. Of course, my, my wife didn't pay for it that way. Oh, God, I never seek those things. Yeah. I never seek those things. But I seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I know how it is for God to add things in my life. Listen to me, guys. I was poor. I am poor no more. Not because I sought not to be poor anymore. I sought the kingdom of God. And God just keeps adding things to me. You know, I, we, we, I want you to see it because your faith will grow. And your fears will go. Okay? This is, what does this mean to us? Is this. <coughs> Whenever God gives us a miracle that feeds us, it is a test to us whether we understand the miracles of God in our lives. You know, we are hungry. And uh, because we're hungry, let's, let's eat and we're talking. And I, I heard, so I said, hey, you guys are hungry, let's, let's eat. Oh, Pastor said, we don't have money, uh, but we're really hungry. I'm not asking if you have money, let's just go eat. But we don't have money. No, we'll just eat, we're all hungry, we'll eat. We'll pay for it, I'll, I'll take care of it. So we ate, and I, I paid for it. Did they see the miracles? The following day, they were hungry again. They are no longer praying. Where is Pastor Jose? They missed it. And when I found out they're looking for me so that I can pay for the food again, I disappear. <laughs> I am no longer hungry. You know? When I hear that, I avoid them. Because they are not into a relationship with me. They just want to eat. We want a relationship. Are you following me? Okay. First of all, the answer of Jesus is a rebuke to them. It's a rebuke to us. Do not, <clears throat> listen to this here. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that lasts for eternal life. A rebuke because too often, we enslave ourselves willingly for food. This is just a temporary thing. <coughs> However, it's not willing to do, we are not willing to do anything for something with eternal value. You know what you, you guys are willing to do just to get an extra buck? Yeah. Just to be able to eat in a nice restaurant? What is that? People are fascinated with, with nice restaurants. I lost that fascination. I, I have eaten in, in good and great restaurants. I've lost that fascination. That's why when Hong Kong was very open, uh, Brother Will and I will be there and 
we have, we have friends, and if you ask them where do you want to eat, they want to eat, oh, this, Hong Kong. They, they want to I said, Brother Willie, that's not word. I said, Sa tabi -tabi tayo. I, mean, I really like eating on, on the, on the we, we will go around Hong Kong and look for bitter tea. And after we drink two cups of bitter tea, we look for a bathroom and look for another bitter tea. We're, we're happy. We just, I mean, and we talk and say, some of, Brother William, some of our friends, they, they want this expensive restaurant. They don't know that the food here is better. I'm no longer seeing those things. But God keeps, keeps providing. I don't know how many people invite me. Oh, let's, let's eat to this nice restaurant, Pastor. So I'll pay for it. Like, I'm interested. I really am not, especially if I'm on, on, on mission. No, I, I'm, I'm busy. It's, I, I'm not there for that. Oh, but I keep having those invitations. I'm, I think God is just telling me, if you keep doing the work, I'll keep providing. Don't, don't, don't. That's why I, I sh you should never worry about those things. Remember the historical background that I mentioned about why the 5,000 men were there? Now they suddenly forget any possible rebellion. Now they are willing to follow and look for Jesus because of what they can put in their belly. And this is the sad thing. We feel hurt when our friends only look for us when they need help. Or we feel sad if our families only contact us when they need help, right? But this is what we do to Jesus. Oftentimes, we only feel the need to be close to him because we have a need. This is the, not the reason why Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish. For example, <coughs> in a political campaign, the officials will say, especially in the Philippines. We'll get rid of graft and corruption. Russia hoax. China. No. Obviously, China is doing You know what the politicians do? They don't want to do it. turned out a lot of our politicians on both sides of the aisle, they are heavily connected to China. I thought you were campaigning against corruption. Oh, no, no more now. Because they are not looking for righteousness. They are looking for bread. This is, this is a sad story. We waste our lives looking for bread. We are not supposed to look for bread. They are just supposed to be added to us. We keep looking for bread. That's none of our business. God will provide the bread. We seek first His kingdom. Jesus wants them to know when God multiplied the bread through Jesus Christ, what is the message? God is your provider. Now, when the Bible says God is your provider, it doesn't mean it will always be in a, in a first class restaurant. Okay? Sometimes you will even have a forced fasting. How did Elijah got fed? Huh? He was fed by an untrained bird. The ravens, the scavengers. You know how dirty those are? But that's the best service. What's the best service? It turned out the people are dying of famine. They would, they would eat spoiled food. You know how I know? My uncles and my parents and my grandparents lived to the Second World War and, and the aftermath. My uncle will tell me he will wash, because of lack of funds, he will wash spoiled rice. After he washed the spoiled rice so that the sour taste will be gone, he said, I will reheat it and eat it quickly. That's famine. What we don't realize is not only did God provide for him, he put him in a brook where nobody will go. Nobody will try to steal from him. He was in the best place. He never planted. 
But God told Elijah, you keep doing my work. I will be your provider. Now listen to me. If when you ask for food or blessings that feeds you, God provides the miracle, that's not the real miracle. The real miracle takes place when your eyes are open and you realize you will lack nothing. Why? God is your provider. Are Are you following that? God is your provider now. He's now in charge of your life. Come recession, come pandemic or pandemonium or people were buying all kinds of toilet paper. They never went crazy on those things. God knows I, I need them. Yeah. Maybe some people are still packed with to- toilet papers, you know. May it last until the next millennium in your life, you know. We, we fail to realize God is saying, I have an assignment for you. Do the work of the ministry. Do the work of God. Keep doing that. I will provide for us. But we keep missing it. So the moment somebody gives bread, we thought that's our God. We go after that person. We go after that job like a God. That's why people keep missing the assembly of the No matter, the Jews are guilty of that. God always said, I will double your blessings on the sixth day. They still never listen. Because they thought they're so good, so talented, so smart. Well, God gave me these talents. God gave you those talents not to make bread, but to do the work of God. That's the question of the crowd. What do we need to do to perform the work of God? Therefore, the miracle itself is helping us look properly and at an entirely different perspective on the world. Oil, oil is running out. Let's reserve. No, forget oil. God is the one who made the oil. Ah, let's panic buy. Let's buy all the cereals. Well, if we have a small house, where are you going to sleep on top of the cereal? You keep missing it. God is your pro- God had provided for me in the Philippines. He provided for me here. He provided for me everywhere I go. You know, even in that poor country of Nepal, I eat well. Yeah. Why? Because God didn't change. He's the same God who was with me in the Philippines. He's with me here in the U.S. And wherever I go, not only is God with me, from what we learn in Exodus, where is God? He is ahead of me. He's leading me. That's the miracle. And that's what we keep losing perspective. That's why we keep having fear and making messed up decisions in your life. We cannot see God. If we don't worry about food, then we can spend our time doing the work of God. We don't do the work of God sometimes because we are so engaged in getting bread. No, no, I, I have to work extra because I have extra bills to pay. But this is the day of the Lord. Yeah, I have extra. Brother, you don't understand. Don't you ever tell me I don't understand. You don't know how much debt me and my wife were buried in. We understand. Okay. We understand. And we never cheat God on the tithe. We gave our offering. We, we make use of... Boy, some people laugh at us when we're buying secondhand stuff. Yeah. But those are not our priorities. Our priorities is doing the work of God. Why are people willing today so willing to be locked down? Why? Well, number one, they receive a stimulus check. Remove those checks. You know why in, in the Philippines, they have a lockdown still. You know, I, I, I was just talking to my wheel last week. I said, forget it. People are going, working. You know why? 
they're hungry. They don't want to lose their job. People are willing to brave through the possibility of exposure and death just to eat. You know why we support lockdown? Why I don't support lockdown. You know why people support lockdown? They get a stimulus check. Trump has an excellent economy and they've got savings. Remove all of those. Remove them. See what happens. I don't care if they are so weak, they will go to the streets and find work. For what? For bread. We are willing to die for bread. We are willing to steal for bread. We are willing to sell our bodies into prostitution for bread. And God says, you don't have to worry a thing about it. If you seek my kingdom, that bread is yours. That's the miracle. When you can be free from these carnal encumbrances. Therefore, these people who support, you know why they, those governors lock down? You know why? They have police bodyguards. They have paid expenses. That's why he knew some locked down and they found him in a restaurant. What a hypocrite. Yeah. Same thing with this uh, light foot. No cell. And then she was having a haircut. You see? Some people, however, during this lockdown voiced out, we cannot start all over again. Either we die of COVID, we can't let our business. So they break their way. They open their businesses and they fight the government. Why? For bread. For bread. So the question is this. If you're starving right now, in, in the Philippines, my bread drops. My, my bread drops. You know what I do with the bread? I pick it up. Lalo pag nilawa yan, lalo dumi. Wala pang five minutes. Kain ka agad. I'm here in America now. That bread drops. What do I do? Throw it away. Why am I saying that? In my poverty, I'm willing to eat dirty food and have worms in my belly. I'm not saying that figuratively. When I was in elementary, we were given the health officials in our school, and we were given combantrin. I know if you guys remember that. Boy, the kids were going to the bathroom, and worms were coming out. Why is it happening? We were eating dirty food. Why are we willing to eat dirty food? There is none left. We were poor. We are willing to do that. So the government keeps printing this money, the Mickey Mouse money. Listen, we will pay for it. We, our our great-great-grandchildren are already in debt. They will pay for it. That's what we are willing to do for bread. And we forgot that it is God who provides. So now, the people got it partially, you know. Because if you apply this, man, why, why is it, why is it that, that God gives you protection? So you will not be afraid when God tells you to go. He is your protection. Why is it that God heals you? Because the devil will keep throwing sickness and disease around you. You will not be afraid. You know why? He heals but we keep missing it. We keep missing it. We are looking at the symptoms. So question. If you are starving right now, <coughs> if you are starving right now, if you have nothing in your home, will you allow yourself to be locked down? 
I'll guarantee you this. You will never allow yourself to be locked down. Pour that stupid piece of bread. Yeah. What this tells us is we have always been working for bread. Therefore, we have no time to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. This is why things are not being added up to us. Instead, they are being stolen from us. Yeah. The, uh, one of the first billionaires in the Philippines was a member of our church. The whole Fairview before was given to him. I think by President Makapagala or Magsaysay. <coughs> when the Philippines was trying to borrow something like $50 million from IMF, he was borrowing $500 million from IMF. This is how rich this guy is. When he, he was an engineer. When he, uh, he started his business, 12 to 12.30, and presidents used to call him, 12 to 12.30, do not disturb. I am in a meeting. I'm in a conference, that's what he said. You know what that is? 12 to 12.30 every day, he is praying. He said, the only reason why I'm prospering is because of God. <sighs> Did the prophets ever worry? Did Jesus ever have a meeting with his disciples? What is going to be their next meal? Jesus was just busy doing the work. Did, did Paul ever worry about that? They got it. So the people now partially get. They ask the question, what can we do to perform the works of God? That's why, oh, trabaho ka lang. Baka mo lang kang trabaho. You missed the miracle. Your, your livelihood is not dependent on the job. Believe me, I know it. Your livelihood is dependent on God, the source of your life. But that is, look, that is what you call as a spiritual perspective. You have, you have to see the heart. And you have to see the heart of God. So now they got it. What can we do to perform the works of God? Miracles are done by God so we can do His work. Why do I need healing and health? So I can keep going. If I'm sick, I can't keep going. Now, I cannot ask God for healing and go to the nightclub afterwards and go whoring and go committing adultery, the more I will die. That's why Jesus said, go and sin no more. I cannot ask God for a miracle to disobey His word. Lord, give me a miracle so I can keep disobeying Your word. You cannot do that. When you obey the, the word of the Lord, you do His work. But this is what we do. We ask for a miracle so we can disobey Him. That's nuts. We perform the works of God when we can have God do His work with us. He can do His work when we obey His word. Ultimately, the summary, have faith in God. Lord, why, why will I go on missions when we are out of money? Because I sent you to missions. Have faith in God. Lord, why do I have to go to the U.S. to study when I don't have enough money? Because I told you to study. Have faith in God. Now, when I resign, I launch in... By the way, when I resign, I don't even have a visa. Can you imagine resigning without, without a visa? I was, I was anxious. You, you, you asked my wife. I was, I was not oozing in faith. I was just obedient. My, my wife can see fear uh, in my eyes. And God did a miracle. I resigned. I, did, I stretched out my hand, so to speak. And God did his part. I was able to study that's called a miracle, but you have to participate. So now I know if God wants me to study something, it's provided for. I have seen it do it so many times in my life. Why will I doubt him now? If I doubt him now, I never saw him. I missed the miracle. Therefore, we need to be focused on living by faith. Living by faith is only possible when God does the miracles for us through us and with us, so we can keep doing the work of God. Oh, pastor said, pray for me. I have a miracle. 
I have a job. Well, brother, you have been missing the services. How can God give you a miracle to disobey His word? Think about it. That's a plain, simple step. Yeah. Why will God give you a miracle to disobey His word? Can you imagine God give you, oh, I'm so happy with you. Look at you, you're so disobedient now. Yeah. We're so focused. God gave you a car with the monthly amortization, of course. Well, God gave, me, God, God gave me this car. Look at this thing. God gave me this car. Oh, I need to pay it. I need to pay it. Well, listen, I, I thought God gave you the car. I need to pay it. I need to pay it. So I can't be in church for the next two months. I have to pay it. Well, I thought God gave you the car. I have to pay it or I will lose it. Whoa, 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 whoa. God gave you the car and you will lose it? Why? Will God take it back? You never saw it. You, never, you only saw the car. You missed the miracle. You ate the bread. You ate the fish. You never saw the sign. These are faith signs. And I'm telling you, the church today keeps missing this. You know why I'm very confident. I have one more building in my spirit. But I keep telling you guys, I don't know if I'll be able to accomplish it because it is a corporate work. We will lay down it. We bought two buildings already. Look, when a lot of our members left who thought they are rich, we have lowered our debts to less than $170,000 with a building that is over $2.5 million. While they left and they thought they had the money. No, God has the money. He has the money. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hill. So pray like one of my friends before. Lord, I need a jeep. Can you sell 10 carabaos? That's, what, that's how he prayed. He understood, he's not an educated person, so that's how he understood it. Pastor was saying, no, I just asked God to sell 10 carabaos. I said, why? I need a building. I said, why 10 carabaos? Well, because he said he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. If he sells 10 carabaos, I'll have the money. This is how he prayed. Yeah. You need a car? Tell God to, send, to sell some of his uh, Chilean sea bus. It's expensive. You know, so. Maybe you can, you, can, you can buy. Why do we keep looking for signs? Now let me say this. Our focus should not be on the miracles, but on God in living by faith and growing our faith. Why? Because all things are possible to him who believes. Can you imagine those Christians who are no longer having their devotion? They're not coming to church. Faith comes by hearing. Don't tell me they have a strong faith. Their faith weakened. Well, they're, they're following on the internet. Well, I don't know that. Because, you know, I have kids who are doing online education. I look at James. James, can you help me now? No, Papa, I'm in class. You're playing drums. <laughs> what, what class are you taking? French. Oh, I, I don't know that French do, do that in drums. Do that in drums. <laughs> online education. You see? You can... They, they will wake up and never even brush their teeth and still on, on the covers. Log in. Present. What, what did you learn? I, I, I don't know. I'm sleepy. Yeah. Why do we keep looking for signs? Verse 30. What sign then are you going to do? So Now, no. Just when you think their eyes were being opened, here we go again, verse 30. What sign then are you going to do so that we may see and believe you? They ask, what are you going <coughs> to perform? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. Just as it's, it's written, he gave them bread and from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, Moses, look at this. They were sounding spiritual. God gave them manna. Oh, spiritual communication. <clears throat> Jesus read their hearts. Look at Jesus said. He said, Truly I tell you, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven, 
They were saying God gave our ancestors bread, but actually the spiritual talk in their heart, oh, Moses is the one who gave it. They thought Moses was the source of, of bread. That's what Jesus said. Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they ask, sir, give us this bread. You know, I have seen and this happen. Oh, my man, this, this brother of ours, Rich, you know, brother, you are God's answer to our prayers. I, I need transportation money. Thank God for you. You are not praying to God, you're praying to him. And I've seen a lot of people do that. Yeah. You have missed the miracle. You have, you have failed to see God. God was using Moses and the people begin to think Moses is the one giving the bread. That's what Jesus said. Jesus was not listening to their lips. He was listening to their hearts. Just when we thought the people are having a spiritual breakthrough after asking Jesus about the work of God, <coughs> they asked this unbelief question. What sign are you going to do so we may see and believe you? From, so that we may do the work of God so we may see and believe you. They ask for a sign again. But then faith comes from hearing. Hearing means hearing and doing. And hearing and doing the word of God. Jesus, that's why Jesus said to Thomas, more blessed are those who believe and yet did not see. From that statement in that specific area of faith, we are more blessed than the 11 apostles. Because I believe that Jesus came back to life. I never saw him. I believe there are nail prints in his hands. I never saw it yet. And Jesus said to Thomas, more blessed are those who believe without seeing. You know, this is what God wanted all along. For a community of people to believe even when they don't see. And so when they see, they are not surprised. If somebody brings me to a nice five-star restaurant, I don't go local. I don't go, look at the bread, look at the fish, look at the... I don't do that. It, it does. One time, Brother Willie and, and his family were having dinner. I was about to go back to the Philippines, to the U.S. They brought me to this nice restaurant. You know how Brother Willie is. He's always extravagant. So He ordered all of this food. And the beautiful thing about Brother Willie is when he orders the food, he will tell you the historical background <laughs> of who, who first ate that food, why it was prepared that way. It was, it was fun to eat with him, always, because of this knowledge that you will get. But eating time, I only pick a couple of dish. And, and, and he said, why only that I ordered so much? I said, that's all I want to eat. I'll go to his house and, and they will, look at their good house. What do you want? I said, kuapao. You know what kuapao is? Shopa without the pao, you know, just the show, uh, meaning just the bread. I like the bread of the show pao, not, not the content. So I will always have kwa pao. And then look at me and say, that's all. That's all I want. So I'll have breakfast, I'll have saba, or sweet potato. That, that's what I eat. And American cheese. My family laughs at me. They think I don't know how to eat cheese. For your information, I eat the cheese. I don't know why they keep saying I don't know how to eat cheese. I just like the American cheese. Simple, cheap. Doesn't give you diarrhea. Okay, so. That's it. Really simple. Yeah. Some people are fascinated by this. That's your preoccupation. Can't be your preoccupation. What sign? Then, then uh, the people try to sound spiritual again by questioning manna from heaven. 
Jesus corrected them by saying, number one, oh, and, and for the first time, the Jews did not understand the miracle of manna. Never understood. They were very happy. Well, what time do you guys sleep at night? Average. Okay. Well, in those days, they had no TV, no internet. So maybe they'll sleep at 7 or 6 p.m. At daybreak, maybe around 6, they'll eat again. 12 hours. 12 hours of not eating will make you hungry. So when the manna drops, they're hungry, they will eat it. By the time it's, it's uh, uh, dawn, they're tired of eating it. But the following morning, because they're hungry, they'll eat it again. For 40 years, they ate manna. Why is it that God just fed them manna? Is God stingy? Question, why did God just give them manna? Why, did, why is it that he did not rain adobo and pancit or lomi? Or ubi cake? Woohoo! Why, why only manna? You don't know the answer. I've talked this several times. So that you will know that man shall not live by bread alone. Now you have to understand what live means. For us, life is health, healing, strength. Your strength does not depend on the food that you eat. You can eat organic all you want and turn them into 100 kinds of smoothie. That is not the source of health. Your source of health is God alone. Amen. He is my health and He is my healing. Of course, He gave us the proper food to eat. We understand that. But even if it's only one dish for 40 years, it will still make you young, strong, and healthy. Who gets healthy with one dish? You get sick that way. But God is teaching them Boys and girls, know and understand, you will be presented with the most luxurious food in the promised land, especially when you reign as kings and priests. Nobles from all parts of the earth will entice you with lavish assault of festivities that will make your eyes ball out. But understand this, man shall not live by bread alone but by my word. What's the first thing we drop when we look for bread? The word. That's why we miss the miracles. Why is it that God fed the people manna? Man shall not live by bread alone. And God is saying, I am your health. They get bitten by snake. Surprisingly, did they look for the doctors? No. They look to God. I am your healing in your health. Why is it that their sandals and their clothes did not wear out and did not get old? Because I am your beauty. You look beautiful because of me, not because of those expensive makeups or expensive clothes. I'm not saying don't buy them, by all means. If you really need them, use them, enjoy it. But God made them beautiful. How can, that, how can you not be beautiful when uh, the glory of the Lord is upon you? you know, this, 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 week, this week I was tickled because I think John, I think it was John who told us this that his friends gave comments after seeing me and my wife, that, that we look good for our age. Look, look at my face. I, I don't put moisturizer there. I don't. Yeah. Why in the world will I waste my money? My wife, every time we go to bed, she looks at me. I thought, she, I thought because she's mesmerized by me, she looks. 
I'm going to put moisturizer. I, I will exfoliate you. I said, I said what, what, what? He said, when you're sleeping, I will. I, I she will exfoliate me. What is that? It sounds, it sounds diarrheal, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm not, God is, is my health. And uh, you have to see it that way. Amen. Oh, but why is it that God sent manna and they never get the message? Because the manna is a picture of what is to come. He said, I'm giving you this manna and every day you have to gather them for food, he said. But the real message is this. I gave you this manna because the true manna is coming. And when the true manna comes, you will eat of this manna and you will never be hungry again. And he'll keep us the manna. You idiots. The manna is standing right in front of you. And they never saw him. Can you imagine those Jews? Lord sent the Messiah. I'm here. Lord sent the Messiah. I'm here. Lord sent the Messiah and they pray. Lord sent the Messiah. <laughs> I'm here. The manna was standing right in front of them and they never recognized it. And some of us who boohoo about our miseries and problems, Lord send us help. Jesus is saying, I'm here. What are you doing? You never saw me. I'm here. That's how we miss the miracle. You see? When you begin to see this, it will take fear out of you. God has provided for us in our direst time of need. Oh, God provides. God healed me with so many sickness. He is my healer and he is my health. What is the last enemy to be destroyed? Why? Why is death the last enemy to be destroyed? Huh? Why? And why is it that some people have the fear of death? You know why? We never died yet. We don't know why it is to die. But Jesus died already. And came back from death. And he said, I overcome. Fear not. But some people are still afraid of death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. That's the last fear that will be taken away from some people. Some people don't have the fear of death anymore. You know why? I'm not afraid of, of being hungry. I've been hunger, hungry several times. And the Lord gave me food. You know why I'm... Why? <laughs> He's my provider. You know why I'm not afraid of sickness and disease? He, held, he had healed me so many times. I know how to get healed. You know, I, I'm not afraid of my kids rebelling against me. They are arrows in my quiver. They are a gift to me and my wife. And they make me happy. Yeah. They make me happy. Uh, all of them makes me happy. Why? They're a gift to me. You know what, what the beautiful thing about the gift? You can do whatever you want with it. I make demands of the gift. The gift doesn't make demands of me. Yeah. I'm happy with my wife because she is to submit to me. Why? That's what the word says, and I believe the word. And I'm not settling for anything less than that. It takes the fear out of you. So when somebody tells me, do not touch that topic because this member will leave. She, big, she gives big tights. 
God has been providing for me before we get to know each other. And you threaten me with that? It's not going to work. God has always been my provider. Yeah. Also, I said, why do you preach like that? Because the church needs courageous preachers. A lot of our preachers and leaders, they are cowards. They don't like to confront lie, and they are afraid to teach the truth. Well, I am not. Because the Lord has delivered me from those fears. Well, what if you lose your congregation? You know why you are here? I told you two weeks ago. You know why you're here? God brought you here. Yeah. I'm confident with that. Jesus was telling them, I am the true manna. And they end up, they, they, end back, they went back to where they started. Give us this manna. I'm here. Brothers and sisters, you've got Jesus. You've got everything. Really? Exactly. You don't see it yet. Pray that you see it. Pray that you see it. When you see it, it's a beautiful thing. And it's a liberating thing. Amen? Next week, I'm excited. We're going to talk about the bread of life. Amen? Praise God. Did you learn something tonight? Praise God. Let's all stand. Hallelujah.